Hey guys, this is video number two of the SOK rack mount battery mini series. This video is going to cover assembly of the rack. We'll get the batteries installed in the rack. We'll get them parallel connected together and we'll take a look at the communication software, which allows these batteries to communicate with one another and to a computer for monitoring. So let's get to it. The battery rack kit will come with three main components. We have four of these vertical support posts. We have eight of these front horizontal posts. Uh, it's kind of like a U-channel style design. And we have eight of these side horizontal support posts that are kind of like an L-shape design. And then we've got a large bag of Phillips screws. All right, so we're gonna start by assembling the front and the back pieces separately. Um, and the way you orient this is you wanna find two vertical posts and you wanna put the square holes either facing forward or facing backward. These will go on the front and the back of the rack. And then you wanna make sure also that the end with the hole is down. And this hole is for if you wanna anchor the entire rack to the floor. This end of the rack is the top. You do not wanna have this side down. So once you find two pieces that face the correct direction, uh, so then we're going to take our U-channel pieces here. And these pieces are oriented with the open side of the U-channel facing downward. And you'll see each end has two screws, one on the end of the U-channel support piece and one on the front. And this is the way I find it's easiest to assemble it, is just to do it on the floor. And I'm using a power drill to assemble this with a number two. And uh, you wanna make sure you do not over tighten these screws. So now we've got one post done and all we need to do is attach the right side of the post the same way. All right, so now we have two fully assembled pieces and it's starting to look a little bit like a rack. So next we are ready to install our side rails, which are these L-shaped brackets. And these are going to go with the two Phillips screws facing outwards. I've got one of these laying against the wall. I'm gonna hold this one away from the wall. And then I can just sort of uh, rest them on one another like so to get those first two screws in. And you can see it just sits like that. Just be careful it doesn't fall over while you are working on it. So then we just have to go through and install the other seven the same way. And there we go. Guys, this is actually a very heavy duty rack. I don't think the pictures they have online do justice. I mean, it's very, very strong. It just doesn't really wobble at all in either direction. So that's pretty good. So next I'm going to install these square nuts into the server rack. And these are what will hold the battery in place from sliding back out. So on the front of the rack, we have the rectangular shaped hole. Uh, so we have this little clip on the side of the nut and we're going to put it in this way with the clips horizontal and facing outward. Just like this and those clips will hold that nut in from falling back out. All right, so I'm still not sure where exactly I wanna position this rack because I haven't gotten my inverters yet. So I picked up this dolly cart on Uline and uh, I don't know, it's rated for 1,000 pounds and uh, this rack should only be about 450 to 500 loaded. So we're at about half of its rated capacity, but it just doesn't feel, you know, the steel just feels kind of flimsy. So I'm gonna use it anyway and I'm going to do so because I noticed that the feet of this rack uh, line up with where these wheels are. So the weight from the rack will be transferred directly down to the wheels. And you can see underneath they are reinforced with some pretty thick steel, so. So like I said, you can see how these legs sit directly above the wheels on that steel reinforced plate. All four of them are the same way. Um, all four of these wheels lock, that way I'm not having to worry about this cart wheeling away. Okay, so before I loaded these batteries, I made sure that the circuit breaker was off and the BMS is also shut down, so. Um, I don't want to accidentally have these terminals come in contact with another battery, the frame, or anything else. So I made sure the battery is completely shut down. And uh, these batteries are heavy. So if you're like me and you don't have one of those fancy pump-up cards to lift them like other people on YouTube seem to have, I just asked the second person to help me lift it. It was very easy to manage into the rack with two people. We need to put our ear bracket on here that's going to connect the battery to the frame of the rack. So the ear bracket will go on with the tab facing outward. And there are just a series of four Phillips screws to attach this to the battery case. And uh, while I was assembling that, I did notice there were actually six screws, not four. So now we're ready to slide this back into the rack. And then these larger screws that came with it will go in the ear brackets to secure the battery to the frame. 
All right, that is pretty cool. I got three more batteries to go. All right, and there we have the completed rack loaded up with batteries. Now, when you order batteries, you'll be asked to select an inverter type, and you'll notice one of the batteries will be labeled master. So this is the battery which is programmed for the inverter you selected. And in that case, this is going to be battery number one. So I've chosen to put this battery at the top of the rack. And uh, we'll just number these two, three, four going down the rack. These batteries are shipped uh, in a shutdown state, which means not only is the circuit breaker off, the BMS is also turned off. So to turn on the BMS, you just need a small screwdriver or a paper clip or something uh, to stick in the hole labeled reset. And you'll just hold this button down until you see the LEDs begin to start. And there you go, you can see the BMS is starting up. So we'll start up the other three the same way. So before I connect any of these batteries together in parallel, I wanna make sure they're all at the same voltage. If you connect two batteries in parallel that are not at the same voltage, you risk having a large inrush of current from one battery to the other, which could overload and damage the BMS. Going to use my clamp meter here from Harbor Freight. Unfortunately, the Fluke 75 meter that I've had for, I don't know, 20 plus years has finally died. So trying to find parts to repair that meter because I really like that meter. Uh, but in the meantime, this will certainly do. So I'm gonna turn on all four circuit breakers. 52.6, 52.7, 52.8, 52.7. These are all within two tenths of a volt of each other, so I'm ready to proceed with connections. If they were apart any significant amount, I would put a 48 volt charger on the lower battery and try to bring it up to match the rest. For the connections between the battery, I'll be using four aught gauge wire, that's four zeros American wire gauge. And I've cut a few pieces that fit in between the battery. And then I ended up using five 16th inch diameter hole lugs. And uh, this is the first time I've used this brand lug and I really like this style. Previously I had purchased my lugs from Temco, but uh, I think I'll be using these going forward. Not only are they tin plated, uh, the lugs are actually UL listed. And uh, the diameter seems to fit this four gauge wire a lot better than some of the cheaper ones I was using. Um, so there are three black leads, two red leads. I am short two ring terminals because apparently I cannot count. Uh, so we're going to install it with these five conductors until my second pack of ring terminals gets here and I can make the final positive. Uh, so again, making sure all of these circuit breakers are turned off and wearing a pair of safety glasses, we're just going to use these conductors to join the packs together in parallel. Just pick whichever post you want. It doesn't matter which of the two posts you use. And then we'll use the remaining post to make the next connection. So next I'm going to connect the communications cables so the batteries can talk to each other. And that's where this addressing switch or these DIP switches come into play. Each of these batteries needs to have a unique address on the RS-485 network. The current connected user's manual has a nice table of the positions these switches need to be in for a specific battery number. I'm going to press and hold the reset button to turn off the battery. I don't think you actually need to shut it down, but I think that's the safest way to handle this. So for battery number one, the addressing table says switch number one needs to be on, which is in the up position and the remaining three switches should be off or in the down position. Uh, so for battery number two, we need switch one off, switch two on, switch three and four off. So we need to move the second switch to the on position. It's that easy. So I'm going to repeat this process for the remaining two batteries. So next I'm connecting the RS-45 B and C ports together. It doesn't matter which one of these ports you use, they are both the same. You just need one port connected on each battery. And I'm just going to use a standard RJ-45 Ethernet cable to complete this step. All four batteries are now started back up and these circuit breakers are turned on. So now that we have all of our batteries connected and wired up, we should be able to see them from the computer using the SOK Toolkit software. And I'm going to use this RS-232 to USB adapter cable. Uh, so the RJ11 end will plug into the RS-232 ports behind this negative cable here. So to download the software on the current connected website, we need to go to the instruction manual, click on the PC communications chapter, and then we need to download the SOK Toolkit. Once you have that downloaded, you can install the driver if you need to. Uh, so then we go in the program folder and we can run the SOK tools. Uh, so it connected to my batteries automatically here. Uh, if yours did not automatically connect, you may need to change uh, the COM port. I only have one COM port, which is the USB adapter that's plugged in. 
and I can only see one of my batteries, so I must have done something wrong here. All right, so in the manual here, I missed the step where it says uh, you must set serial port pack option to FF prior to start monitor if you want to use the buttons across the top for a 1 to 15. So I'm going to change the pack to FF, reopen the serial port, and click start. All right, so now that it says pack FF, and pack quantity of four. I'm able to go through the tabs and see all four of my battery packs. So this is battery number two, battery number three, and battery number four. But this is pretty neat, the way you can quickly check all of the information in real time. All right, so that will conclude part number two. Uh, this is a very, very nice battery. It's just over 20 kilowatt hours, which is a lot of power in a small rack mount space like this. Also, I did want to say that after using this Uline cart to put this battery on, uh, while I am only at half of the rated capacity of this cart, I just don't like it. It's a little bit difficult to push around, and I would probably not do that again, nor would I recommend you purchase this dolly. So it was interesting to try out, but uh, I don't think it was the best idea. So part number three will be coming very soon, probably in about two to three weeks. I did get a notification from Watts247 that my second LV6540 inverter has shipped. So it's just a matter of FedEx getting it here. Then I have to go out and collect all the parts I'll need. Uh, to assemble both of those inverters and a breaker panel and all the cabling for that. So um, probably closer to three weeks, be on the lookout for that video. So please hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.